Hey guys, welcome back to the card review series. Party cards haven't been too crazy so far, but I think this set is the start of an unprecedented level of power creep that is only going to get more ridiculous. The featured party you are this time is Honoka. Honoka is a pure attribute skill type card and her highest stat is technique at 10,492 in her base form. Honoka's card skill restores stamina equal to 20% to 32% of her technique value. Her passive ability increases the base appeal of pure attribute cards by 5.3% to 6.5%, and her show ability increases the skill activation rate of pure attribute cards by 10% for 3 notes, which is guaranteed to activate whenever the SP skill is used. Onika is our first defensively focused party card, and she does not disappoint. When scaled down to regular UR stat values in her base form, Onika has 6,453 appeal, 3,585 stamina, and 7,888 technique. Compared to the current best healer in the game, Festival Yo 2, Party Honoka actually has better offensive stats at the expense of a lower stamina value. But that doesn't matter for Honoka since her card skill's effectiveness is based on her technique value. With higher stat values, you might come to the conclusion that Honoka is now the best defensive card in the game. However, there are a few things holding her back from that position. First of all, Honoka isn't a festival card, so her card skill effectiveness only has a maximum of 32% instead of 40%. This means that even though Honoka has a higher technique value than Yo, Yo is still going to provide more protection. At least that's the case at maximum limit increases. Comparing both of them in their base forms, Honoka will obviously win out since party cards have the effective stat values of a limit increase to UR. But the other major thing holding Honoka back is her abilities only targeting pure attribute cards. Using Honoka for non-pure attribute show formations will just result in an above average healer card with no other benefit. On the other hand, strategy-based synergy for cards like Yo and Mari simply make for more friendly team-building options, even if they might be slightly weaker overall. However, if we're only considering team-building in the scope of pure attribute teams, then Honoka is by far the best defensive option you can use. This is mostly due to the fact that there just aren't many good pure attribute defensive cards, with most of them being event cards. Pure attribute is the only one without a defensive festival card, Natural Attribute was pretty bad up until recently, but at least they had Festival Hanamaru to use up until the release of Festival Haneo 2. The best option we had prior to Party Horika was probably the Halloween Umi. She had a nice balanced stat line, while also providing pure attribute synergy. Her second year status was also good for synergizing with powerful cards like Festival Chika and Festival Yo. But since Honoka is also a second year student, she completely outclasses Umi in every way, and that's without even considering her show ability. The thing that puts Honoka over the top is this show ability. As of late, K-Lab has been emphasizing show abilities that increase skill activation rate with easy to activate conditions. Getting an extra 10% skill activation rate every time you use the SP skill is quite significant. Most offensive cards don't even have useful show abilities, so an easy source of increasing skill activation rate is quite welcome. One of the show ability is good on any pure attribute show formation, but there's two specific teams that can really take advantage of this. The first one is the third year pure attribute critical focus show formation, which focuses on using cards like Festival Daya and Princess Karin to increase the skill activation rate to ridiculous means through getting a lot of criticals. Onaka would make an excellent side strategy option for this kind of team, providing an additional 10% skill activation rate increase every every time you use the SP skill. The other team that you can really take advantage of her show ability is obviously an SP focused team. And that is where this ability is truly broken. We are slowly gravitating towards a completely dominant SP based meta, and Honoka is only the start of the power creep atrocities that are to come. Onika is going on the defensive tier list in S plus tier, great offensive stats, and offers amazing synergy for pure attribute cards. So if you've been dying to get a good pure attribute defensive card, Honoka is going to be your best bet. Her great stat values do put her in the top offensive tier list as well in A minus tier. Keep in mind that Honoka, as well as other party cards, are ranked on my lists based on their scaled down stat values. In reality, party cards will absolutely smash regular and festival UR cards in their base form. But I don't want my list to be all party cards at the top, so this is my solution. My tier lists are more of a desirability list, if anything, so don't get too obsessed with the math. 
the featured SR this box is the Just Believe Kanata. Kanata is an elegant attribute voltage type card, and her highest stat is appeal at 4,853 in her base form. Kanata's card skill increases the voltage gain from notes of voltage type cards by 4% to 5.2% for 5 notes. Her passive ability increases the base appeal of voltage type cards by 3% to 4.2%, and her show ability increases the appeal of same strategy cards by 1% for each voltage type card on your show formation, which lasts for 3 notes and is guaranteed to activate whenever an appeal chance starts. Kanata has quite the impressive offensive stat line, which now makes her the strongest elegant attribute offensive SR card, beating out the previous queen Kimi no Kokoro Daya. This also makes Kanata the SR card with the third highest appeal value in the game now, losing only to Sora Bokumaki and Snow Halation Katori. Kanata's skill set is more focused on team building compared to those two though, which actually makes her a viable side strategy option if you don't already have enough appeal boosters. Her passive ability targets voltage type cards, so if you're using the standard one strategy meta of two voltage type cards and one guard or skill type card for defense, then you can get some great value from Kanata's ability. While it's not going to be as strong as a standard UR passive appeal booster, this is certainly an option for those players that just don't have enough of those. Kanata's versatility and great stats make her a great candidate to get maximum limit increases in. If you're lacking a strong elegant attribute carry, I would highly recommend investing in Kanata if you do manage to get her, whether from scouting for Honoka or just accidentally sometime in the future, but definitely don't use your star gems to exclusively go for her. She's more of a nice bonus you can pick up along the way. That's the end of the card review, here's a quick look at all the tier lists. In case you didn't know, I finished my All-Stars book. You can download this 600-page PDF by becoming a member of my Patreon and pledging $5. Infinite knowledge of All-Stars could be yours, and it comes with the bonus of paying for my cop ramen. Patreon members also get to watch my card review videos early before their public release. At the end of my card reviews is when I shout out my super special supporters on Patreon. All my SR, SSR, and UR card members are shown on screen. Thank you for your immense support, it makes my heart go doki doki. My final thoughts, Honoka is a pretty amazing defensive card, but just isn't as easy to use as a generalist card like Festival Mari, Eli2, or Yo2. If you do get Honoka though, you can still use her for off-attribute teams, but I think this is more of a whale bait card than anything. Thing. Since her show ability is just crazy for those SP-based teams that whales love to use. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.